Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to be here this morning. Amen? Amen. Uh, Before we get started, let's pray. Father, we love you and praise you. Thank you so much for your word. Father God, your word is truth. Lord, your word is life. Lord, your word is light. Father God, your word is the way. And Lord, as we continue to, 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 to keep looking into and digging up things in your word, I thank you, Father, that you're revealing yourself to us. And Lord, that that is helping uh, others to, be, to, be, uh, to find that same revelation as, as we're revealing yourself through, through us. And we just thank you for that. Father, we just thank you that, that you give us the wisdom. Lord, that you help us to, to focus on the things that need to be focused on. And that, Father God, that we're walking with you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I, w- I want to, um, this morning, the last time I spoke, we, I had titled it, Risking It. Risking It. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry this on to be part two of Risking It. Because this is, I think this is part of, part of um, being bold and being bold for your faith. Being bold in this world that is, uh, would love, would love this world, whether you realize it or not, or believe it or not, this world would love to keep you quiet. This world would love to keep uh, the kingdom of God quiet. The, this world would love to keep the children of God quiet. And uh, we're here to tell you, you're not going to keep us quiet. All right, so I had a couple people say amen, and a couple people waved, shook their head yes. But if you're, if, you're, if you're fine being quiet for the kingdom of God, this message isn't for you. All right. That's how I'll start off this morning, right? There we go. Okay. So uh, the last time we were together, we, we had finished up in John chapter 15. So if you'll go to John chapter 15 with me. Again, this is risking it. We're calling it risking it part two. John chapter 15, and this is in the NASB version. Got the NASB up there. It says, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. This is Jesus talking. He's talking to his disciples. He's talking to them uh, as he's instructing them, as he's, as he's uh, teaching them about who they are. He says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me. Everybody say abide. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. So Jesus is telling the disciples, he's saying, look, if you, if you want to bear the kind of fruit that matters, because they've, they have spent, they've spent the last three years of their life dedicated to, to Jesus and and, and walking with Jesus and listening, hinging on every word that Jesus had to say, uh, every, every action that Jesus did, they were there to witness it. That's, why, that's what makes the disciples, the, the 12, uh, s- such an amazing part of, of the Christian, of the God's kingdom, is that they were witnesses to everything he said and everything that he did. And so Jesus is telling him, he's like, look, guys, you're going to have to continue to live the same way that you've been living as we move forward and as we go into the future, as we go into what's happening. Because a branch, and he's talking to the disciples, and he's saying, you are all branches, and you cannot bear the kind of fruit that I've been bearing unless you are abiding in or living in me or the word or even the love of God. So neither can you unless you abide in me. He says in verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and they cast them into the fire and they are burned. We have a, uh, Silas has been, Silas is a very hard worker. Uh, all of my kids work really hard, but Silas, uh, he, he works really hard outside. He loves working outside. And uh, when, when he got done with school, he said, Dad, I'm going to give you two weeks of my life to do all these things outside. He didn't really say that, but his actions let me know that's what he was thinking, that he gave us, he gave our family two weeks of his life, and he took all this brush, all this, this undergrowth that's in the way back of our, of, our, of our lots, he took all of that, and he piled it up, he, he cut it so that it wouldn't grow anymore, and then he piled it up, and guess what? Not a one of that brush is growing. 
the ones that he cut up, the ones that he cut off and he pulled off to the side. All of that stuff is sitting in a, in a pile ready to be burned, to get rid of it, because there's no more life in it. And because there's no more life in it, it can't continue to live, it can't get, continue to grow, and it can't, can't continue to give much fruit. So that's what Jesus is saying here, that if, you, if you're cut off, and he's not saying that if I cut you off, he's saying if you don't abide in me, if you don't live in me, if you don't live in my word, if you don't live in who I am, then you will be thrown away as a branch and dry up and then be cast into the fire and then burned. But, verse 7, I say, everybody say, but... But if you abide in me and my words abide in you. I, I love that. I love that he just, he makes it so simple. He just says, all you got to do is just say what I say. All you have to do is just talk like me. He says, if, my, if you abide in me, if you live in me and my words live in you, then ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. See, th- that totally takes away any, any, uh, any argument that God doesn't want you to do good or to have a good life. That verse right there, he says, my father is glorified by this. He's glorified when your life looks like his life, when your words look, sound like his words, when your actions look like his actions. God is glorified. So he wants you to look uh, a step above. He wants you to look different. And he says here in verse 9, he, he starts to bring it down, and, he, and he's, he's like going, going out, and he's, he's talking, and he's talking, he's talking, he's coming in, and he says, Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. Then he says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I've spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. So as, 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 we're, as we're looking at this, we, a couple of things that we can pull out of it uh, other than what we've just said is that God does want us to live differently. He wants, he wants our fruit, the, 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 the evidence of your life to look different than it did before you got born again. If it doesn't, then you're not born again. I didn't mean to say that, but it's the truth. If your life doesn't look different before you were born again, you have to question, did I really raise my hand and say, yes, I want want Jesus? Did I really say that Jesus is my Savior and Jesus is my Lord. Because your life should be different. God is not multiplying himself through other Jesuses, the Son of God. He multiplies himself through the body of Christ. We, our, our bodies, our lives are the evidence of God being still alive. If you're, if, if you, if God's love is on the inside of you, then you have his love. I like, I like how he's saying this. He says, he says in John 15, he says, it's not that you have no activity without Jesus, that if you, he tells us that we can do nothing without him. We can do nothing without him, but you go, well, you know, I've been living this whole, my whole life, and maybe, I, maybe before I got born again, you know, I did things before I got born again. Yeah, you did do things before you got born again. But your activity after you get born again is the activity that matters. Because it's the activity that takes place in the kingdom of God and for Christ that is eternally, that is eternally changing. That changes everything for eternity. And so when, when, when Jesus says, if you abide in me and I abide in you, if, 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 if I, you abide in me and my words abide in you, if, if, my, if you love me and, and you do my commandments, he says all these things. And he says, without me that you can do nothing, that means that if you're not doing things because of Christ, you're doing nothing. Do we understand this? We got that. You're doing nothing. You're, doing, you're, just, you're just occupying space until you die. 
And that's not how God created us. That is not what the image of God looks like. It's not that your life and actions of this life, it is that your life and actions of this life, they are meant for eternal value. That everything that you do, that everything that you say affects eternity in some way. But when you do it for Jesus, that's, that's, the, that's the stuff that really matters. You can't do anything with real eternal value without Jesus. So Jesus is telling his disciples, he's like, look guys, I still want this fruit to go forward. I still want the fruit of, of my life. Jesus is telling him, I want this, the fruit of my life to still be evident, to still be active on the earth. So what we have to do is we've got to figure out, okay, Jesus, what is, what is it that we're supposed to be reproducing? What is it that we're supposed to be showing off? What are we supposed to be giving into this world today? And today, we're tomorrow, uh, this, today, not tomorrow, tomorrow we're not going to talk about this. Today we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about what love is. What love is. Because he tells the disciples that it's his love, it's, that it's his love is abiding in us. That, it, that we're to abide in his love and that his love abides in us. And if, his, if, and if we do his words, that means that we're, we're showing forth his love. Now, what happens especially every four years thereabouts, and I won't get into this much, but you'll start to hear things about how one part of the population is really bad and stupid and they don't know what's going on, and that the other population, part of the population is the best pop, part of the population that there possibly can be. You all know what I'm talking about. This happens every four years. Everybody, talk, everybody raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. And we're not going to talk about it, but what I want you to understand is that is an that is a, a um, that is a, an evidence of no love. That is evidence of. Some people say it is well that I've, I've but that's that's not what love is. And so what we're going to talk about is what is love, what is love, and how how can we how can we make sure that we're showing it forth correctly. A lot of times people think well love is a feeling, and you know and we'll, we'll say we've talked we we've, we've we've shared about this before how love is a how, how love can there's different types of love and that the Greeks were very kind and you know and they came up with all these different ways that we can show affection and show emotion and all this other stuff but it's all all of those types of love are very dependent on the person that you're showing that love to that you will stop showing them love because what they don't respond and so you'll quit or you'll only love because they love you. In other words, you'll only show feelings and emotions of, of whatever to them because they show feelings and emotions towards you. Now, this, this can be in a, a husband and wife relationship. This can be a, a family relationship. This is friends. And the Greeks are, you know, they, they talk about all different kinds of, and types of love. But what I want to focus on here, because what Jesus is talking about, if you go to John chapter 15, John chapter 15, go down to verse 13. James, Esther, whoever's up there. John chapter 15, verse 15. I'm sorry, 13. That's what I said, right? 13. John chapter 15, verse 13 says, Greater love has no man, no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. Go to verse 14. You are my friends if you do what I command you. 15. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. Next verse. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you would go and bear fruit, and that your fruit would remain, so that whatever you ask of the father in my name, he may give it to you. Next verse. This command, this I command that you love one another. Stay there for a second. That word love is agape. That word love is, is translated from the Greek as the word agape. And we know that agape is what? Unconditional love. We define it as unconditional love. Now, what we do sometimes, and I've done it, and as I say, well, that's the God kind of love. That only God can, can possess that kind of love. And I'm, I, I want to correct myself because that's not true. See, we teach that, that, that we were created in the image of God. 
And if we're created in the image of God, then we have the ability to love like God loves. I'm going to say it again over here because I think only you guys got it. We are created in the image of God. And if God has unconditional love, that means we have the ability to have unconditional love also. Because we're created in His image. Do you get that? See, uh, to me, what opened my eyes uh, just throughout, throughout time and throughout my existence, when I started realizing I'm created in the image of God, I started seeing things, things differently. I started seeing things differently because that means, well, maybe some of the things that I'm doing, they don't represent God very well. But love is one of the things that God wants us to reproduce, that He wants that fruit to be evident in our lives more than anything else that we could possibly do or say or think, whatever it is. He wants us to love one another. Now, Jesus, Jesus is talking about this. He's talk, still talking to his disciples. And the word agape, of course, means it, that it means unconditional love. It means love that, that is without condition. And what we make the mistake of doing is we start saying, well, that love means that there is never a reason for me not to love you. And so that love, what we'll, this, what we'll make the mistake of doing is we'll say, all right, I'm only going to love you because it sounds right, or I'm going to only love you because population or because culture thinks that I should be, should be doing this. I'm only going to, um, I want to I fix that. I want to fix this because love is not something That you receive. I think I can say it like that. Love is not something that you receive. Love is something that you give. Love is an action. Love is, a, is, is performing. It is actually performing deeds. Love is actually, it's, and, and this is, I, I'm talking about unconditional love. All right. Now there is there are other kinds of love. There's your there's your you know storge and eros and you know filio and all those kinds of love that that all have different aspects. But they all for some reason people are really good. They can fall in and out of those things. You know. Well, I you know you might be, might be you know if you're somebody. I, I come from from a divorced home and I can remember my parents saying you know well we fell out of love with each other. You know well that that was an agape. Right? It wasn't. Okay? Um, you know, you might say, well, well, I was, I was talking to a gentleman one time uh, trying to get something done with my phone. And, uh, and he was telling me about his daughter had, had just told him. And, and as, as I tell you these things, I want you to understand that we have to figure out how to continue to have unconditional love, not unconditional acceptance. Right? Because love is not acceptance. The God kind of love. See, the reason that I can say this is because Jesus, God said in John 3, 16, that for God so agape the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him would not die and live in, live, live, in, live in hell for eternity, but have everlasting life, or live in heaven, let, have a heaven, you make your, make your heavenly home, and you get to enjoy the, the kingdom of God for the rest of your life here on earth, and then you get to enjoy it in heaven when you go to heaven. There was nothing in that that says that you've got to do something, that God's waiting for you to do something for Him. See, unconditional love is like, we have, a, we have a swimming pool in our, in our backyard, and there are conditions that the swimming pool becomes swimmable. Right now, my swimming pool is not swimmable. It is green. All right? Now, it's been different shades of green this week, and hopefully it's coming out. We're trying to cast the demons out of it because it's, it looks like little demons. looks like little go goblins have been going to the bathroom in it or something. I don't know what it is. But there are conditions that if the swimming pool, the, the water that's in the pool meets the conditions, 
them, and then it'll be a blessing to our family and to those that swim in it. All right? It's not unconditional. If I were to jump in it now, I might get an ear infection or an eye infection or, you know, something go up my nose and you read about me in the paper on Wednesday being in the hospital, you know, something like that. But that's, that, that is how sometimes we act like, well, we've got to be unconditional and accept anything from anybody so that, you know, we're showing the love of God. We think we have to accept whatever, but that's not what God's talking about here. See, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you're showing for them. I'm combining a lot of things that he said in 15. He says, and you're showing the love of God. You're demonstrating it. You're doing demonstrations of it. You are showing somebody, you know, somebody comes in and they're, they, see, and this, this, talking about love like this means that you've got to lay your life down. Go to 15, 13 again. Jesus said in verse 15, uh, chapter 15, verse 13. 13, I'm sorry. Greater love has no one than this. Greater agape, greater unconditional love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Now, I took a minute to look up what life means. In life here, it means your breath, number one. And number two is your thoughts. Now, Jesus laid down his breath. And Jesus laid down his thoughts, too. Because he refused to be pulled into arguments. He refused to be pulled into a place where he would have to allow sin to occupy his space. Because he never sinned. The Bible says Jesus never sinned. But yet he had people wanting to kill him, people constantly challenging him, people saying that he was a, you know, from the devil, all these things that, 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 that was going on. But Jesus laid down his thoughts so that he could effectively do the love of God to fulfillment, to the whole place where he gave up his life, his breath, and said, this is, this is why I'm here. That is the love of God. The love of God is not accepting every sin into your life, every sin into your space, every thought pattern that doesn't line up with the Word of God. That is not the love. Now, the love is allowing people to come in, allowing people to, 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 to occupy a space where they can see the good works that God has put on the inside of you because of his love. Greater love has no one than this. This is the, this is, this is the love of God. No question, there's no challenging it. Well, I don't know if we should accept this kind of person. Or I, you know, I don't know, you know, throughout history, we've, we've had people do things in the name of the Lord but it wasn't because of the love of God that they did it. They did it because they thought something really, really stupid and warped and messed up. Greater love. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. And the love that he's talking about is agape. The love that he wants us to be showing forth is agape. Go to, go to uh, let's see, we're in, go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Are y'all okay? And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 to 19. It says, By this we come to know, progressively to recognize, to perceive, to understand the essential love or agape. That he, Jesus, laid down his own life. You know, the Bible also tells us that Jesus emptied himself. He emptied himself. Jesus knew he was the son of God. But you know what? The Bible says he emptied himself. Not of, not of that, um, well, he was the son of God, so he must have emptied, you know, emptied it. No, he emptied that thought. He kept that thought from occupying place in his life. Because he was here to live as a man, to walk as a man, 
to be filled with the Holy Ghost and to do the work of the ministry, to do, it, to do what God had called him to do. So it says here that he laid down his own life for us. Then he continues here and he says, and we ought to lay down our lives for those who are our brothers in him. But if anyone has this world's goods, resources for sustaining life, and sees his brother and fellow believer in need, yet closes his heart of compassion against him, how can the love of God live and remain in him? Now, there's, there's some, some, some translations make this out to be towards fellow brothers, towards the church, towards the, the men and women in the church, and that's, and that's fine. That, you know, we're supposed to love the brethren. But... You can't love the brethren if you're not showing love to the world. You, there, there's, no, there's no difference. You don't act one way. What, see, what we'll do is we'll go, well, they're not Christians, so I can act any old way I want to. That's not what God's talking about here. But what he is saying is that people will see you interacting with other brethren and being like, okay, I want a part of that. I want, I want to be in that vein. I want to be in that, in that river. I want to be in that life. Because what God wants, he wants, he wants as many people as possible to come to know him. Verse 18 says, Little children, let us not love mere, merely in theory or in speech, but in deed and in truth. And the Amplified here adds this. He says, in practice and in sincerity. That we're doing it. And we're sincere about it. It's not, well, I've got to be nice to seven people today. So here I go. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about a sincerity. And you want to know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into this, but one of the ways that we're supposed to walk in love is in kindness. And if you want to know if somebody's kind or not, you ask a little kid about them. Because a little kid will say, yeah, they're not nice. Oh, yeah, but he just gave you can't. Yeah, but he's not nice. They know the... T- and Jesus told us that we need to recognize that the little children are really valuable to the kingdom of God. Amen. If anyone has this world's goods, let's go down to 19. He says, little children, 18, little children, let us not merely love in theory or in speech, but in deed and in truth, in practice and in sincerity. By this, we shall come to know, again, perceive, recognize, and understand that we are of the truth and can reassure our hearts in his presence, we can quietly conciliate and pacify our hearts in his presence because we know that we are living in the truth of God if we are truly walking in his love. Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. Again, I want to help. We're, we're, God's warning us to, to understand what his love is. Galatians 5. really quiet up here. Galatians 5.14. Galatians 5.14, again, in the Amplified, I think is what I asked for upstairs. Galatians 5.14 says, For the whole law, for the whole law concerning human relationships is complied with one, with, I'm sorry, is complied within the one precept that you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Again, that love is agape, and that love is something that is unconditional. Now, I said that the, I was trying to help you see what conditions are, but conditions are not... Um, when I say that love is unconditional, that means that God's love has no conditions on it leaving Him. God's love has... There, are no, there is no reason ever... Ever for God's love to not leave his presence. He gave Jesus, I mean, he gave Jesus because he loves the world. He agapes the world. It is unconditional. That means we can do nothing. There's no task or deed. There is no amount of offering or praise. There is no amount of uh, church attendance. There's no amount of 
um, you know, doing good things for the poor. There's no amount of, of all these things that we want to, that we get, especially as humans, that we think, well, we've got to do. We've got to do, we've got to do, we've got to do, we've got to do. God handled it in the beginning, and he said, my love is unconditional. It is for you. Anyone who believes, anyone who believes in him will not perish in any part of their life. It opens, this is opening up about what salvation is and how salvation affects us. It doesn't just affect us to get to go to heaven, but it is a, uh, a protection. It's a providence. It's a, it's, it's, it, it, we, believe in, we believe there is a, a provision. We believe there's help. We believe there's healing. There's, there's all these things that are inside of salvation because God doesn't. There are no conditions that God's word leaves his mouth. If he says it, all of a sudden now we're the condition. We're the reason that we don't see it happen. We're the reason that we're having that we have a hard time have a hard time understanding this. We got to got to get beside get get out of yourself and get to know who God is, because He's got no He has no conditions, and that's the same kind of love. So that means what that what that transfers to in our lives is that the love walk that we have, what we're what we do is that we do things because of who Jesus is on the inside of us. Not because Jonah is such a nice person, I'm going to do nice things to him. That is, do, you all, do we understand? That is not what love is. Love is not because of. Love is not because of. Well, because you've made this easy for me, I love you and you know we're going to be best friends, all that kind of stuff. No. It is not, it is, you are, this is who you are as a child of God. You are somebody who now has the ability to perform deeds and acts just like God does. This, this helped me a lot. This, this, I'm teaching this as something because I've been taught this. Just, just meditating on this because there's so much confusion on, I mean, and people in the church will even say, well, the love of God is this and the love of God is that. But it's the love of God is laying down your life, your thoughts, your prejudices, your, you know, preconceived notions, your, all these things that, that keep us from being able to share with somebody who God truly is, your insecurities, that is as much of your life as anything else, how insecure you are. I'm a very insecure person, believe it or not. There's a lot of reasons that I can come up with why I can't do certain things. And one of them is because, I, well, I'm insecure. But that's not what the love of God, compel, how that looks in your life. There's no, see, if God doesn't have a reason to not give his love to you, not to not give his best to you, if God has no conditions why you can't receive his love, then you have no reason there are no gave, gave to you. Giving him the same word, given the same deeds, given the same actions that God, that God has done for us. So to do this in Galatians chapter 5, 14, you love your neighbor as yourself. In order to do this, you've got to lay down your differences. You've got to lay down your life. You've got to lay down your prejudices because you're laying down your life. You've got to lay down your presumptions about another person because you're laying down your life. Now, there was a, a, silly, a silly example of this. is you know, if somebody, if I was standing at a pier and somebody came running by me as fast as they could and they're like, I'm doing this to save you, and they jump in the water and they drowned, you would think that person was what? Yeah, crazy. But if they drowned because you were drowning, it's a whole different perspective. That person laid down their life for you. And I think one of the greatest things that we can remember is that what, that's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus, that's what Jesus, that's why he was created. That's why he was sent to this earth. 
That's why he was born of a virgin. That's why he lived a sinless life, so that he could carry every weight, every burden, every sin that could possibly occupy your body that was created in the image of God. He could carry that for you and lay down his life, his life for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, just to, just real quick here. There's things that, that, you, that you don't do when you're showing the love of God. All right? Because this is where we get into some confusion sometimes. We don't lose our faith. If, you're, if you think that, the, that you're having, that you're, you're loving somebody... And it is affecting your faith walk. You need to take a step back and go, it's, now's not my time to be trying to walk in love in this situation. I need to take, it's, it's okay. I, I was running yesterday and I run by this church and uh, you know, I don't believe in signs, but they got this marquee in front of their building. And you know what it said on it? It's okay said it's okay now i'm breathing heavy and i'm panting hard and so i'm thinking well okay this is okay that i'm doing this but god tells us it's okay you don't you don't lose your faith trying to walk in love you don't lose your witness if you notice that well i'm trying to walk in love and i'm trying to to be what god wants me to be in this situation or with these people but you know what it's affecting my witness or my testimony or what I say about God, then you need to take a step back. You need to take a step back. Because God wants you to not, it's not about, well, I just, I'm just a martyr for God and I just have to go through everything for him. And, oh, you know, bless, bless, bless God, bless me as I do this. It's so hard. No, no. God does not expect you to, to, to give up who you are because you're, you're, and I'm talking about your relationship with him. Don't allow things that aren't part of your relationship to all of a sudden start sneaking in and, may, and getting you confused because, well, I, I, well I'm, you know, I'm, I'm walking in love to this person, but, but, you know, I'm being exposed to some stuff that I really wish I didn't have in my mind. I'm wishing I didn't have my, you know, my thought life. I wish that, that stuff wasn't there. So don't, don't lose your witness, your demonstration for the love of God is for everybody that you come into contact with. It is, it is not, it's not limited. And that's, I want you to understand, it is not limited. You are to demonstrate God's love to everybody in every situation, whether they accept it or not, doesn't affect your ability to do it doesn't affect your ability to be who God's called you to be. Amen. Now next week we're, we'll look at we'll start looking at what love is, and you can you can cheat and go ahead and read First uh, Corinthians thirteen and how love actually demonstrates itself. But it's coming from the greatest demonstrator that ever walked on the face of the earth. Jesus he showed us perfectly how we act in love. How we walk in love. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand. Father, we love you and praise you. And thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father God, that your word is life, that your word is a light. Lord, that your word is power, that your word is, is healing, that your word is, is provision, that your word is safety and protection, your word is deliverance. Father God, that your word is all these things, that it all works by love. It all works by by us doing the things that you tell us to do, doing the things that you've shown us to do. Father, as we're working through this and as we're walking through this, help us to, to, to take, the, take the shackles off. Help us, Father God, to, to unbind ourselves so that we can actually be bold in our lifestyle and be bold and to do what you're telling us to do, what you call, why you placed us here. We sing this song, Great is Your Faithfulness. Lord, each one of us are here, whether we realize it or not, because of your faithfulness. But that's only because we need to be faithful to you so that we can be somewhere 
for their faithfulness so that they can take a step in their journey towards you. Help us, Father God, to get beyond ourselves. Help us to get, get out, of, out of ourselves and, Lord, to, to lean into that, that man, that woman that you have called us to be. Help us, Father God, to, 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 to go and, and to be bold, to be bold in our actions for you. To be bold, Father God, in, 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 in the things that we're doing. That This is something we have to live this way. And it's not because of, but Lord, it's unconditional, just like you showed to us. Unconditional. Unconditional. It's always there. The love that we have for the brethren, the love that we have for this world, it's always there. It's always evident because we are born of the kingdom of God. And your word tells us that you are love. We have that on the inside of us. So Lord, help us this week. Help us, Father God, to, to see the things, see the areas. To help us, Father God, to check the, the situations, Lord, that, that we're in. That if it's something that's, that's causing us to not be um, of the man or the woman of God that you've called us to be, Lord, help us to take a step back. But Lord, help us to do it knowing that it makes our love walk better. It makes our love walk better in Jesus' name. Is there anybody here this morning that wants prayer?